Hey guys, this is Subhash Sesh Mishra, your test coach. Today we will learn a very important topic in software testing. What is defect life cycle? If you are a software tester, you should understand this concept very well. This is also frequently asked in interviews. Okay. So let's understand what it is. The very first thing is defect life cycle is also known as bug life cycle. So do not confuse both are same okay so defect life cycle is a cycle which a defect goes through during its lifetime so defect life cycle starts when defect is found and ends when defect is closed so we are talking about life cycle right so life cycle of a defect that's why i'm telling a defect life cycle is a cycle which a defect goes through during its lifetime and when we raise a defect the life cycle starts and when we close a defect the life cycle ends i hope you all understand what a defect is if you don't understand it let me just remind you a defect in software testing is a variation or deviation of the software application from end user's requirement or original business requirement for example you are testing a calculator and trying to add two numbers for example 5 and 3 you are trying to add and what you are expecting here you are expecting result as 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 but for example here you got answer as something else other than 8 so that is a bug because we were expecting 8 and we got a result something else so our expected result and actual result didn't match that's why it is a bug so when actual result deviates from the expected result while testing a software application or product then it results into a defect hence any deviation from the specification mentioned in the requirement document is a defect in different organization it is called differently like bug issue incidents or problem so do not worry about it all these things are same okay so you need to understand what it is called in your organization but overall the meaning is same okay so let's start with our original topic what is defect life cycle okay so the defect life cycle can vary from organization to organization and also from project to project based on few factors like organization policy software development model for example someone using agile someone using iterative model so things will differ even project timeline team structure all these things also depends right so in in some organization the defect life cycle can be different but i'll try to explain you the most common defect life cycle so you will able to understand the concept and it will help you right so the very first thing when you were testing something and you saw there is a deviation the way i was telling right you were testing a calculator and you were trying to test by doing some addition operation like you are trying to add 5 plus 3 and you are expecting a result as 8 but you got for example result as 53 okay then what you will do the very first thing you will raise a defect right so when you will raise a defect what will happen the status will be new because you will raise a new defect and again what is in your organization what is the tool you are using that also depends in some organization people use qc in some organization people are using jira so depending upon what you are using in your organization you can raise a new defect and when you are logging a new defect the very first thing the status will be new okay then what will happen then what is the next status then the next status is assigned again when you raise this bug maybe 
the lead of your team approves that bug if that is genuine and all and then he can assign the bug or defect to the corresponding developer again i am telling all these things depends on your organization in some organization directly the bug will get assigned to the corresponding developer okay in few organization developer lead also can check and assign it to the proper dev team so it depends but the cycle remains same after new it will be assigned assigned to some particular developer okay who is going to fix that bug then the status is open so when developer got that bug then he needs to analyze right before fixing that bug right so he will open the bug and he will try to understand what is the issue and he will analyze that so the status will be open okay then we will move to the next thing next is fixed okay so when developer analyze the issue and did the fix he did he wrote some code and he fixed it right then he will mark the status as fixed and he will pass it to the testing team because testing team needs to re verify if it is working or not so the next status is fixed okay developer will fix the bug and he will mark the status as fixed and then once he has fixed it then the next status he will put it as pending test so after fixing the defect developer has given that particular code for retesting to the testers so the testing is pending on the testers end so the status is pending retest okay then what will happen the next thing the next thing is retest so in this stage tester will do the retesting because in our example we are trying to add two numbers 5 plus 3 and it was giving result earlier it was giving result as 53 now again we need to test that calculator by doing the same operation 5 plus 3 so we are doing the retest the same test cases we are trying to re execute right so if we are getting the result as 8 then well and good right so after retest in the in the retest phase the qa will retest that particular defect or bug okay so once that is retested what will be the status status will be verified right because everything is working fine for example in our uh, in our example whatever we have tested 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 initially we raised the bug because it was not working fine then when we retested we saw it is working fine and then the status become verified because whatever we wanted to check here everything is working fine so the status is verified then what will be the next status next status will be closed because we have done the retesting we have done the verification verified and then it is closed so here you saw the bug started as a we raised a new bug the status was new then it assigned open fixed pending retest retest verified and finally we closed it right so close is like the bug is closed everything is working fine right so when we did this retest right so there is a chance right maybe retest in retest we see that the fix is not working fine then what we will do because that can happen right for example developer didn't fix it properly so what will be the next step so the next step will be reopened because whatever we are trying to verify whatever we are expecting we didn't get that result in our example we are trying to verify 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 maybe again in our retest we did we didn't get that result we got something else which is wrong so again we will reopen that issue and it will get assigned to the developer again it will be in the assigned state because developer has to fix it and when developer will again the steps remain same when developer will uh, it will get assigned to a developer then it he will reopen it then it will be fixed then again pending retest then retest then verified closed or again if it is 
not working fine again it will go through the reopen state okay so you need to understand it very well here when the retest is when the retest result is not fine when we saw that in after retest also the issue is not working fine then we will reopen it okay we will not mark it as verified we will just reopen it and we will assign it to the corresponding developer okay then that is fine all these things are fine right we understood now how reopen also works then there are few more status also let's try to understand that okay so the very next status is duplicate so what duplicate means and you can see right when i am telling open then we have a status duplicate so for example you created a new bug then assigned then bug is open so in the open state right someone is means the developer has opened that bug and analyzing and he found that there is already a duplicate bug for example in your team there are four team members are working and whatever bug you have raised somebody else has already raised that bug then what will happen in that case the bug is a duplicate bug because we have already one existing bug like whatever you have raised now so the status is duplicate then what developer will do he will just mark the new bug as duplicate of the old bug so they will just link it and make it as a duplicate in jira we can do all these things you can link it and you can mark it as duplicate so when that bug will be fixed your issue will also fixed because both in both the places the issue is same that's why it is duplicate then rejected so if developer feels that the bug is not genuine he can reject the bug okay so developer felt that whatever you have raised that is not correct maybe qa has done some mistake and wrongly they are raising this issue but actually that is not a issue then he can reject the bug so when developer is rejecting the bug then maybe you if you think that is again a correct bug maybe you can give your screenshots or videos or you can directly talk to your developer and see what is the reason why they are rejecting it but developer can reject the bug if he or she feels that it is a not it is not a genuine bug okay so there is a status as rejected then we have a status as deferred so the bug change to deferred state what it means it means the bug is going to be fixed in the next upcoming releases for example you raised a bug which is not very important for this release it's okay we can leave with that bug and we can release it in our next upcoming releases so developer feels that it's okay it's a minor bug we can defer it we can defer it to the next release it means they are not going to fix it in the current release whatever you are working on they will fix it in the next upcoming releases so that is deferred okay so most of the time if the priority uh, or uh, severity is low in that case we defer it okay defer it to the next release where means that is a issue but they don't want to fix it in that point of time they they want to maybe they have some extra work more work they want to keep it uh, for the next release and fix it in the next release then the status is not a bug okay so again by looking at it looking at the status right you can understand if it is not a bug if the functionality maybe uh, qa understands the functionality in a wrong way and they just erased it then we can say it as a not a bug okay because it if developer feels that if it is not a valid bug then they can mark a status as not a bug also okay they are not going to fix it so they will simply mark it as not a bug they are not accepting it as a bug so developer can mark it as a not a bug so that's all about the defect life cycle hope you understand all the status thank you
If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to explain it. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.